On this Friday's episode of Travel and Young, we're going to talk about our seven favorite castles in Denmark. We're the Youngs. We've spent our lives traveling the world. And in 2018, we moved from Chicago, Illinois to Copenhagen, Denmark. Now we want to share with you how our new lives abroad is keeping us young. Keeping us young. Are helping to keep us young. Welcome to this Friday's Traveling Young, the castle edition. The castle episode. We've talked about this before. We love yeah. castles. We do. We have been to so many castles. Every time we go on a trip, we find a castle. Yeah. Maya and I in Ireland <laughs> went to a ton of castles. Yes. We love castles the way that Maya loves cows. Yes, we do. We're obsessed with them. The way that brisket loves cheese. <laughs> And the way that Schmeigel <laughs> loves to stop goals, as he will in the World Cup. That's right. Yes. But today we're going to focus on castles here in Denmark. Yeah. And there's quite a few. We have a whole list. We're going to go through them all, tell you what we think, and let's well, go. Let's start with number seven. Yeah. Number seven on our list is the beautiful Gaunus lot, which is located here on the island of Schellen next to the city of Nesdale. It's a beautiful palace, so you can go in and see some of the rooms are still set up from when people would stay there. But the reason to go to Gaunus lot is really the gardens. We were there during Christmas time last year. Um, they had a great Christmas market, outdoor Christmas market. Uh, but in addition to the outdoor Christmas market, they have all kinds of events all throughout the year. They have a beautiful tulip fest that happens in the spring. They've got great playgrounds for the kids. They even have a brewery there. They have a dog there that's the, the official Gowney Slot dog. So it's just a really fun place to go and, and I really enjoy getting out there and, and going and seeing the gardens and stuff. It's a good day trip from Copenhagen, yeah. and uh, I like that you can bring your own dog, so yeah, Brisket <laughs> could come with us, which was super nice. Um, and it is a really neat, just open area that uh, that is really pretty when the gardens yeah. are open. Um, and I think it's actually still a private residence, a piece of it, which is why yeah, you that's can't right. See the whole yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. There's part that's private, but that's why it's number seven on our yeah. list. Number six on the list is Jespris Salat. Jespris is located on the Fredriksund Peninsula on Zealand. What's special about Jespris is it's where Frederick VII lived, and he was the last absolute monarch of Denmark as he signed the constitution giving more power to the people. He chose to purchase the property and make it one of his private residences. After he passed, his wife, Countess Dana, turned a piece of the property into a shelter for abandoned girls. And now it's still used today as an orphanage. Dana is actually buried in the property inside the, uh, you know, like a little tomb there out in the gardens. Yeah, she is. And yeah. it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful palace. I loved going there and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, was it was it? a fantastic day. Yeah. Number five on our list is Kronborg Slot up in Helsingor, which is at the very top of Shelland. And I don't think we could have a list of castles in Denmark without having Kronborg because of course Kronborg is probably one of the most important castles that are in Denmark. That's where um, they really ruled Denmark for hundreds of years and it had a very important place because it was right there across the strait from Sweden. So it played a very important role in protecting that strait and making sure Sure that the ships could still had to come through and pay the taxes and that's really how Denmark got so much wealth during that time but it's really awesome we went there at Christmas time so it's really neat you kind of meander through the entire uh, castle to go see all the different people who are selling things they've got a brewery down at the bottom you can go down in the bottom and the very bottom and see Holgard but it's super cool and and we've talked before about how some palaces are meant for uh, protection and some palaces are meant for beauty and this one is definitely meant for protection. I 
and one of my favorite things to do um, is to go to these places during seasonal stuff like Christmas. Yeah. But you can also go and see Hamlet perform there because it's yes. the Hamlet Castle, which yeah. we have not done. But that's one of the things that you can do. <laughs> that at is Kronborg's one of the lot. really big things that happens during the summer. And yeah, Shakespeare based Elsinore Castle off of that. Number four on our list is the Koolinghus, which is located in Kooling, Denmark on Uland. And we, I was blown away by this, this place. It was just absolutely gorgeous. And there's so much history that you can see as they've been reconstructing pieces of it. So there's a whole bunch of new and old, and it's just, and it's also just an amazing museum. And one of my favorite things that Denmark does with these types of castles is they turn them into also museums. And so we got to see a really cool display of, uh, of recreated um, outfits that the kings and queens wore many years ago. And they'd recreated them and sewn them and stuff to, to look in, in the period. I mean, it's just a, a really, really beautiful place. And I love the, um, the mix of it being a museum, but also the history of the actual castle itself and the surroundings right on the water. And I really enjoyed the town of Cooling while we were there. And we were yeah. there at Christmas as well. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was a ton of Christmas decorations. There were some, but- No, but we got to see the light show. That was fun. Yeah, and the yeah. evening time. Yeah. But in the in the castle, there wasn't a ton. There were a few hints of Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I definitely recommend going to Cooling Hoose. That was one of my favorite yeah. places that we went to last year. Definitely. Number three is Rosenborg Slot, which is located right in central Copenhagen. We just went there recently, uh, but it's a great place to go. It's small, but mighty. It's probably one of the smallest castles that we, we've really gone to, um, but it has so much stuff. It has a great exhibition of Flora Danica, uh, pottery. It's got some beautiful Venetian glass. It's got those awesome silver lions. And of course, it has the crown jewels in the bottom. And you can go and see all this amazing jewelry that they've gotten over the many years. <laughs> And it's just overwhelming how much they have in there. And it's it's such a cool place and it's right there in the city. It's great if you're coming in um, and you've got a little bit of time, but you still wanna see some of what they were able, you know, some of the castles there that the monarchy has stayed at and you can go there to Rosenborg right in the city. Well, and there's a King's Garden right there, yeah, yeah. and it's right next to Norpur, and so it's pretty common for people to sit yeah. out and have picnics and stuff yeah, it's in the super summertime. Easy to get too. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, when we came here as tourists, we went and visited. That's always in all of the course, top lists yeah. of places to go. <laughs> it's definitely worth seeing um, right there in downtown Copenhagen. Yeah. Number two on our list is Aesco, which is located on the island of Fjun. Now, I've been to Aesco, I think, three times now, and it is. I, it may be my favorite place. It is such a, a cool spot and it's got, what's amazing about, uh, what, what makes a really good castle to me in Denmark is to have really cool surroundings and gardens and activities. And Egesko has so much to do. You can go with the family, you can spend a day. There's a car museum, there's motorcycles, there's gardens, and then there's this treetop walk that you can do. There's trampolines for little kids. They have music festivals there in the summertime. I mean, there's so many activities and they paint it up and decorate for every season. And I was there with Maya during Halloween and it was a really neat place to spend a little bit of time during Halloween. The castle itself is really nice to visit, although a piece of it is still a private residence. You can't go everywhere, but just walking the grounds, you can easily spend a majority of a day um, just walking around and seeing everything there is because it's such a cool location. loves it because they have <laughs> Titiana's the Palace. They have Titiana's Palace, which is an amazing dollhouse um, that they purchased a while back. Uh, it's just so cool to see. And speaking of dolls, they have a haunted doll up in the attic. Oh, that well, the attic is... You can't, le you can't le move it. Oh, the attic luck. is an interesting place, yeah. but <laughs> the only downfall to A's go is it's on the other side of the Nightmare Bridge, yeah. but I've still been there three times because it's yeah. such a cool place to visit. Number one on our list is Frederiksborg Slot located in Hillerul and we, this had to be number one. It's my favorite place to go. We have gone there so many times. Every single time somebody comes to visit us, we take them to Frederiksborg Slot. 
it just is never ending. Like I, I could never get tired of going here. The chapel is absolutely amazing. It just blows me away every time I see it. Um, there's all of the beautiful uh, furniture that is in there, the amazing collection of portraits that are in there. Every time I go, there's something new to look at and there's, there's some like new nook and cranny that I find. And if you do ever get tired of the castle, you can just go right outside and go to the beautiful gardens there. Um, it's um, it is almost like being at Versailles. They do kind of call it the Versailles of Scandinavia. And that's rightfully so because it is absolutely beautiful. They've done so much work to revitalize those gardens because they kind of fell into disrepair for a while and they've really brought them back to their original glory. And it is, it's absolutely wonderful to go out there. You can go during the day, you can go at night, and it's just, it, I never get tired of it. And the gardens are free. So you can just yeah. walk around the gardens. We've gone yeah. up a bunch of times just when we first moved here, you know, in the summer yeah. when it's like light forever going at like nine o'clock at night just to walk around the gardens. And what I love is there's like the super formal parts. There's these kind of like groves of trees that are, you know, you step up and, and each level has something different. And then you can all kind of go off to the side and walk through the forest. And that's just like a whole nother experience. And it's just yeah. so great. I, I, anybody that visits us is definitely, I, I don't know if forced is the right word, but They're required I to make know. sure I that we take know. them to there because it is absolutely yeah. our favorite of all the castles. So now that was basically the run of our seven yeah. top seven. Now there's some honorable mentions in there that we need to say. <laughs> um, for example, Friedensborg. Yes. And we went to go see Friedensborg over the summer. Highly recommend oh, if you can because so the queen, when she's in Uland over the summer, she opens it up for a period of time. And it's neat to be in a castle mm. that an active monarch it's is a living, living castle, in. castle, yeah. I mean, it's so worth going to, but you can't take any video or anything inside, so mm. I have no footage of it. But it was a really, really cool... And the gardens are absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah. Just and beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the other, another one that we wanted to make an honorable mention for was Spruchuk Castle, which we went to with Martin. Um, that was a lot of fun because it was a truly medieval castle. They had that great medieval medicinal garden there and the kids had so much fun. I mean, obviously Maya's quite a bit older than Martin's kids, but the kids had so much fun because it was so open and they could just run and, and have a great time. And so it, you felt safe enough that um, they could go ahead, but you could still sit back and learn some about the castle. Yeah. You know, and I'd never even paid attention or maybe seen no. <laughs> one of those kinds of gardens before, but we saw multiple oh gosh, ones in yeah. Ireland. It seems like every castle I go to now, I'm noticing these like, but <laughs> I, I know it's not the, yeah, it's more the ones with the skulls and crossbones, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's up in Uland and it's super, yeah. super cool to go see. Um, another honorable mention would be the Hammershus ruins. I have to mention this because it's on Bornholm. Yeah, these are the ones on Bornholm. Yeah. Everybody says go to Bornholm. Now, <laughs> There's no video evidence of us being in Bornholm, we've but there. we've been to Bornholm <laughs> and we spent an afternoon around the ruins, which yeah. is really pretty. And we had a gorgeous day um, and it's super cool to go see, even though it's basically just ruins. It's yeah. not like... There's not a lot no, there. No, but it is really... And it's like right on this you know, cliff and everything. I oh, mean, it's a beautiful view. Oh, the views are gorgeous. We, we had a beautiful day when we went and we were just treated to the best views. It was so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And our last honorable mention is Sunneborg Slot, which is in Sunneborg, uh, down in South Yulin. And I really like this. This is probably the best use of kind of a castle that they've turned into a museum. I thought that was such a good museum. They had such great uh, exhibits, especially about the World War II stuff and about uh, in 19... 17 when the well all the border switching germany. switching with germany because it's so close to germany so yeah and i i briefly forgot when they did the vote to make <laughs> you know move the border again to make it part of denmark um but it was so interesting i thought it was such a good use of that space yeah that was that was really nice i and i just enjoyed the town but it was yeah. it was a uh, i mean it wasn't a castle in the classic sense like no. the ones other ones on our list but yeah, it's probably it's closest a to Kolding, Kolding yeah. Hoos, but, um, but yeah, it was super great. And I, I would tell everybody to go there. Yeah. All right. So why don't you tell us, is there a castle we missed <gasps> or would you put these in a different order? I'm yeah. very interested to hear how you would rank your favorite <laughs> castles in Denmark and feel free to also throw in a non-Danish castle because I've been to castles yes. all over. I love to go to castles, although I will say in Ireland, I started to get a little bit of a castle fatigue, mostly because <laughs> they're all like 
super tall and narrow, tiny like, oh, yeah. stairs that I could barely fit through. But besides that, I yeah. love castles. And, and you disappointed me once and pointed out that Mont St. Michel is not technically a castle. Yeah, and that's sorry. one of my favorite places. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> that was this Friday's Traveling Young. We gave you our top seven favorite castles in Denmark with a few extras at the end. Yep. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.